Gil here. In this video I want to demonstrate um, another new model that I have added that will be coming up in the next release. It's a 3-axis servo. This one gets pretty tricky because there's a lot of options. So you'll see a whole bunch of panels here. Basically it's going to default to six channels assuming you're going to use three 16-bit servos use two channels per servo. So each servo is going to default it's going to default to channels one, three, and five. And then each servo you're going to be able to map it to whether it does translation or rotation and which axis, its range of motion, and if you can set limits to the 16-bit uh, value that'll be generated. Let's see, and so you got four meshes that you could add to this. You don't have to add them all, but the capabilities are to add that many. So I'm going to add a static mesh, which means it's not going to move. And this will just be this base here. And I don't need to set anything else for that one. Now, my first motion mesh, I'm going to put the yoke on there. Now these have already, <clears throat> when these models were created, they were kind of created so that they already, yeah, it's like I took a model and I split it apart. So when I bring them in, they're automatically fitting together really well. If they didn't fit well, you might would have to come in here and you know make some adjustments with, with the offsets and scales that you can do for each mesh. And let's see, that one's good the way it is. And then I'm going to add another mesh that'll be the actual head. And that one I do need to move up in Y. So I can bring that up to about here. And I want to rotate it around the red axis, which is X. So I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so it points forward. And just so we can see this view, I'm going to save this viewpoint and just call it moving head. And then uh, let's see, that's all set. There's a couple things I want to show, but first let's see how it's working so far. Add a couple layers. So over here I can right click, say load that viewpoint, and it brings it brings it right into view. Okay, I'm gonna bring a servo effect down. Might as well. Let me go ahead and create a timing mark just so when I bring them down, they get they all end up the same length. So you, I've already named these axes here. Now it might be easier if I went back into these node names and I could say, well, axis one is really going to be my my yoke. Axis two is going to be the the head. I don't have an axis three. And the reason you see these names with the minus signs, those are really, the, the minus sign just prevents that name from showing up when you, let me click here, refresh. When you give it here, it keeps those names from showing up in the list. But they are like the other half of the 16-bit channel. So I'm going to select yoke. And then see how that yoke is moving. It's set to translate X. So I forgot I hadn't changed it. So let me go to the first servo and say, that's going to rotate around the Y axis. So I click to refresh. Now you see that yoke moves around the Y axis. Now it's only moving 180 degrees. So that's another thing I can come back here and say, no, that really goes 360. 
And now that'll do a full 360 for 100 percent. Now if I say I want to move the head, uh, he's also needs to be switched. So servo two needs to be switched to rotate around. That'd be the x-axis. Okay, so if you noticed when I moved the yoke, the problem is that head's not moving with it. So what I've provided is a way to come in here and set a bunch of linkage options. So I'm going to assume that Servo 1 always controls Mesh 1, so that's grayed out. Servo 2 is linked to Mesh 2. Um, I could come in here and say, well, I really want that to move Mesh 1. If I did that, then you'd see when I select the head, which is Servo 2, I'm actually going to be rotating that around the x-axis. But that's not what I want. So I want him to still stay Mesh 2, but what I want is Mesh 2 to rotate when Mesh 1 rotates. So I'm going to link Mesh 2 to Mesh 1. And then come back in here and move the yoke. Now they move together. So that's kind of cool. Let me um, drag a second effect down here. So now I can click the first one, move the yoke part way, click the second one and move the head, and make sure it still moves right. I can play around and tell this guy to do a ramp, get that starting to move, and then click on the other one. Let's, let's uh, I'll just do a simple ramp on that as well. So then you'll see now both axes are moving nice and smooth. Let's see. So just to demonstrate all three, let me swap some of this stuff around. I'm going to come in here and say, hopefully I haven't really experimented with this, so hopefully this won't mess anything up, but I'm going to say that mesh three is now the head. And I need to do the same Y offset. I need to rotate around the X axis. I need to switch mesh two to be the yoke. And mesh one, I'm going to say is the base. And then I don't need a static mesh. So basically I'm gonna say there's no static mesh now. All three meshes move. So now all three servos would be active. So now servo one rotates around Y 360. Servo two is gonna rotate around Y 360 and Survey 3 is going to rotate around X, because that's now my head, 180. So that looks like it's all set up right. Let's see, each servo moves his own mesh. Mesh 2 links to 1. Mesh 3 links to 2. So let's see if that all works out. And let me just get one at a time here just to see if this is working. Okay, so oh, I don't have the names right now. So I need to go back into my node names. And this one's now the base. Two is now the yoke. And three is now the head. I'm not even worrying about the secondary names right now. See, that didn't update yet. Now, if I click the effect, it'll reread them, and now I get the other options. 
So now you can see if I move servo one, the whole base moves. I'll pull in. Uh, let me just delete these and bring new ones in so they're all the same size. This one's the base. I'll make the second effect the yoke, and the third effect be the head. So then I can come in here with the base. I'll leave it a little bit off angle. Then this one moves the yoke. And the third one moves the head. So see how I just relinked everything to different a different mesh ordering? Um, so as you can see, I brought in, I just brought in, you know, any mesh I wanted. So you really have the flexibility to bring in any mesh you'd like. You could probably make this work with a skull and have a moving jaw, whatever, whatever meshes that you could draw or bring in that you find on the net. And hopefully, hopefully this provides, you know, the flexibility everyone needs. If you find something you want to do you can't do, then uh, bring it up with me and I'll see, see what we can do about it. Um, Everything kind of assumes, like like I said, you know, Servo 1 always controls Mesh 1. Servo 2 can control Mesh 1 or 2, and then Servo 3 can do all three. So I kind of assume that you go in order, you know, so I don't let you just start out, you know, like skip Servo 1 and have Servo 3. It assumes that you're going to pick these to run in, in order. So, like, if you only have two servos, then you're just never going to set anything for 3. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to cover right now in this video. So uh, hopefully that's enough to get you kickstarted and to be able to use use the uh, this as a you can use this as a one, two, or three axis servo really. But if you only need one axis, then you could come up in here and just do this do the servo three D option, and that would also allow you to come in here and pick like a, pick a mesh for the motion and also another another mesh for static if, if that's all you need is one axis just do that um so i'm gonna stop the video now i hope you enjoyed it